oh, by the way, when you take the bolt out, it, the, the whole trailing arm will just, it'll just fall on the ground. All right, we're back. Thought we'd start this off with a little bit of uh, unboxing, or at least a uh, half unboxing. I've already done part of it. Uh, what we have here is a uh, adjustable rear trailing arm uh, kit for early 70s Cadillac. And this is from PMT Fabrication. And they make a variety of uh, suspension components, all made in the USA. That's a fancy sticker, isn't it? All right, we'll set that aside. So let's pull this out of here and we'll see what we have. The uh, powder coating looks fantastic. <laughs> uh, I, I mean, just right out of the uh, box, I'd have to say that everything is extremely it's just impressive. It just, it's just utterly fantastic. And they were packed very, very well. Very well protected. And uh, we're going to pull this uh, packing material off of here and see what we have. So this is one of the lower uh, rear trailing arms. Pure Muscle by PMT Motorsports, made in the USA. Very, very nice work. Just exquisite. I would use the word exquisite. Your nice greasing port right there. The bushings look fantastic. And let's take a look at the, uh, the business end, I guess you might say, of this setup. And that would be the adjustable aspect of it and that is the upper rear trailing arms now in very high performance uh, applications you know like racing and for you know extreme four by four things like that where one would want a high degree of adjustability uh, i have seen where you could get um, adjustable lower arms as well, but there is no need for this application. We just need the upper arms to be adjustable. And again, for the upper arms, the quality is just, it's just fantastic. The welds, it's just exquisite. And here's your adjustability. Your locking nut there. And that looks really, really simple. So what we would, would do is we would take measurements on the, uh, of the upper arms and then uh, kind of eyeball it and get these as best we could, the same length. Uh, then we would start our, uh, our tuning procedure. And I think uh, we'll utilize the spreadsheet that you saw in the uh, previous video and uh, I think we'll shoot straight for the jugular and probably knock three or four degrees of pinion angle out of the rear end with these upper arms uh, after we get them installed. So having said all that, man, that, <laughs> I tell you what, that is just, that is so pretty. Okay. All right, folks, I tell you what, let's move on. Let's get this uh, old Cadillac in the air and let's start bolting these new components to our rear suspension. All right, welcome back to the underneath of the rear of my Cadillac, a place you've probably not seen before. No, I take that back. We're here again. Uh, okay. Uh, these are uh, four inch long under the head, uh, half by 13 coarse bolts. And I got, I bought four of them at uh, the big box retailer to replace uh, whichever ones I deem uh, that need to be replaced. So uh, I already took, the nut off of that one right there and let's go ahead and get this guy off
There we go. I got my uh, transmission jack underneath the, uh, the shock mount there. All right, we got the uh, rearward bolt out of there. Had to tap it out of there with a lot of force. And the last time I did this, I had forgotten that um, <laughs> the uh, lower real tr rear trailing arms, they or orientate the, the rear end. And basically there's tension there so that when you take this bolt out, this uh, rear end is gonna want to pivot downward like that and put the pinion angle even more so out of whack so anyway the it's at a severe angle right now so basically had to hammer that bolt out of there uh what i should have done i made a mistake what i should have done was put my jack underneath the uh the diff to keep that uh the whole thing from rotating but i've got it underneath there now and i've got it sort of pivoted back up there and uh when we when we install the new trailing arm We'll get this thing back to where it needs to be and get the uh, get the distance between this mount point and that mount point correct so that we can mount the new trailing arm in place. So let me go ahead and get this bolt out of here. Just one thing right after another. There we go. All right, so one OEM lower rear trailing arm with brand new bushings, I might add. Uh, we installed those, I don't know, five, six years ago. <laughs> They're practically brand new for all intents and purposes. So um, anybody, uh, maybe I'll put these on eBay. So I don't know. We'll see. All right. So up next, what I'm going to do is uh, go ahead and clean uh, these mounting points up and go ahead and put this new control arm in place. All right. Here we go. I uh, just went ahead and got the uh, grinder out and got a little rust off of these two mounting points and uh, touched it up with just a little of uh, black uh, paint there. Just, uh, you know, a little anti-corrosion. You know, you, you have to draw the line, as I stated before, when you're trying to fix a problem. You know, how far do you go, right? It's like, well, that, that's dirty over there. That's rusty there. Let's just grind that over. Let's, no. Pinion angles. We'll fix the other stuff later. Okay, now, uh, the rec recommended lubricant from uh, PMT Fabrication is the uh, super lube synthetic ptfe stuff i've got a small tube here and uh, we'll put that just some of that on the end of the bushings here and then uh, in my grease gun i've got a much uh, bigger tube of the same stuff and uh, we'll fill up the uh, bushings on the grease fittings there after we get this thing installed oh let's see how's this going to go okay yeah like that all right you may recall this super glue this uh, super lube was the stuff that we use in the uh, Mercedes W126 uh, sliding roof repair job. And this is what we used to lubricate the cable and the cable tube. Oh yeah, and I got brand new bolts too, so. Anywho, of course, am I going to have to hammer it in place? Let's try it from the... From... Okay, fine. All right, it took some doing, but the, uh, the, the fit is really tight there. So basically just tap this out a little bit. I think I have enough room to get my, uh, my bolt through there now. So, uh, all right, let me go find that and uh, get a bolt through there and we'll move on. All right, well, that was about the easiest thing I ever did, really. I didn't have any problems with that at all. Lining up these holes in this frame against a brand new part that was designed yesterday and not 50 years ago and Using brand new hardware and I didn't have to get out the spud wrench at all You know, it's this didn't this didn't hardly come in handy at all. Really. Uh, I'm a liar. So yeah <laughs> uh, That was a big job. I had to tweak this out just a touch uh, it's the same dimension but keep in mind there's you know this edge here on the frame is not perfect you know there's a little bit of deformity over the years there's corrosion there's all kinds of stuff so and this is a brand new part you know and its dimensions are precise so you know fitting something modern in, on an old car is always going to be a little bit of a challenge and you might have to get a little crafty so just keep that in mind when doing something like this all right so let me uh, pivot this up and uh, put the other bolt in the other side and it'll go just like that All right, we're just going to leave those uh, loosely 
tighten there for a while until I, you know, I'm sure that I'm positively going to cinch that down in place. But uh, basically, we have our uh, lower rear trailing arm on the driver's side installed. Uh, let's go ahead and uh, grease up uh, these two ends here real quick. All right, we've got to squeeze out. Squeeze out is good. All right. More squeeze out. Squeezy, squeezy. All right, that was a little more of a challenge than I originally anticipated, but then again, I should have known that it wouldn't be just, you know, like falling off a log. Uh, but the, I guess really the only issue I had was when you're doing this, keep in mind that your rear axle is under spring tension. So if you take the old arm off, you need to have your jack underneath the diff to keep the axle from rotating as you pull the arm off. Or you could take the springs out or put a spring compressor on them. You could do it that way too, I guess. And it might be a little bit of a challenge to line up the holes uh, since you're under the spring tension. Uh, you'll have to manipulate the jack somewhat. You have to raise it some and then lower it some to get the, the holes to line up. No big deal. You'll get the hang of it, clearly. All right, I'm going to go ahead and do the other lower trailing arm uh, off camera. And then after that, we'll move on to the upper rear trailing arms and those are adjustable. All right, welcome back. It's a couple of days later now. So we're getting ready to replace the upper trailing arms. Uh, so a couple of things have changed. Well, one big thing really. I went and bought one of these um, under hoist uh, stabilization doohickeys uh, with the little twirly cue thing here, uh, as opposed to using the transmission jack uh, here under the uh, pinion. So I've already taken the nuts off of uh, all the bolts on the upper trailing arms. When you take the upper trailing arms out, the whole pinion is going to want to pivot downward because of the spring pressure. So you have to keep that from happening and that's what this is for. We're going to find the sweet spot by, uh, you know, doing this so that we don't have any tension on our bolts. We just want them to just slide straight out without any fanfare, and then we can take the trailing arms out. Uh, after that, while they're not in there, uh, we will ad adjust this. Now I have my, uh, my little angleometer, or whatever you want to call it, my compass, for lack of a better word, it's a digital compass, and I've got it right here on the flange of the pinion. Now right now it says 79.5, so that means the pinion is, is 10 and a half off the vertical. In the figures I gave you on the last video on the spreadsheet, it was eight degrees, as you may recall. Uh, now, because the car is up in the air and everything's sagging, that number is a little greater, so it's, it's 10 and a half. Regardless, the number I wanna shoot for, I wanna try to knock out four degrees of pinion angle here. For now, I'm gonna ignore what the, the meter is telling me. It says 10 and a half, but I, that's, we know that's not true because when you put it on the ground, it goes to eight. When, when you plug the numbers into the spreadsheet, if we can shoot to four, uh, I think that will have a minor impact on the drive shaft angle as well. And I think that might get us within our uh, or less than one degree of deviation between the, the front and the rear uh, working angles. So that is the plan that we have uh, so far. So up next, I'm going to try to find the sweet spot and release the tension on these arms and tap these bolts out and get these trailing arms out. All right, I got this uh, bolt here on the top of the diff out. Just tapped it out. Basically just adjusted this uh, under hoist screw thread right here. Got as little tension as I could on this junction and just tap the bolt out, no big deal. Uh, the other one is a little more tight. I think maybe what I'm gonna try to do is, I think I'll try to get the impact on it and then just kind of screw it out and let the threads do the work since it might be under a little bit of tension and that might draw it out. There's not really a way to tap it out. So, all right, let me try that next. All right, whoops, all this stuff is in pretty close quarters. Oh man, I think we got it. Oh, by the way, when you take the bolt out, it, the, the whole trailing arm will just, it'll just fall on the ground. Okay, I got both trailing arms out now. 
And let's uh, turn on our digital doohickey. And let's crank this rascal up gingerly. We've got a lot of geometry to change here, and this is going to be a little... I hear some creaking going on. <laughs> so we were at 79 and a half, 10 and a half off the vertical. So I want to knock out four. So we need to be at uh, 83 and a half. I'm going to stop right there for a moment, and I'm going to observe my uh, geometry of my axle and springs and all sorts of things. Now I want to make sure that I'm not breaking anything or bending anything. It all looks pretty good. I can't reinforce enough how cautious you should be when working with uh, a suspension system under spring tension. Um, it's just, you know, just an explosion ready to happen at any microsecond. So, <laughs> so we've got a good brace underneath here, holding all this stuff up. And uh, come on, backlighting. Do your thing. 82. I'm going to go in little increments like that. And I'm going to let these springs and this suspension and these arms just kind of get used to this new geometry. We're going to ease into it, all right? So I'm going to uh, adjust this ever so slightly until I get it to where I want it. And then I'll be right back. All right, we're sitting at 83.5 there. Uh, I think what I'm going to do right now is I'm going to take a measurement of distance between uh, he, uh, the holes here and the holes here and then uh, adjust our upper trading arms and then we will uh, install them slip the bolts through there and uh, not going to tighten it down obviously uh, just put the put the nuts on the end so that you know nothing flies out and then we'll put the car on the ground we'll roll it back and forth bounce it up and down a little bit and then i'll take my uh, digital compass and i'll put it back on all of these areas and then we will do a recalculation of our driveline geometry all right, so I need to take some measurements, and I need a clever way to do it. Not that I'm all that clever. But uh, we're going to slip a couple of bolts through there, and then we'll just get our little tape measure, and we'll loop around the upper bolt, back side of it, and we'll... Get a flashlight, because we can't see. The uh, center to center distance on the uh, stock trailing arms is 13 and a half inches, by the way. All right, so what do we have now? So I have the outer edge to outer edge of this bolt, of, of these bolts here. As far as I can tell, looking up in there, that's 14 and 3 eighths. So that'll give me a ballpark estimate for setting the length of the trailing arms. And then I'll slip it up in there and see how it looks on the holes. And then uh, I'll pull it back down and make adjustments as necessary. So uh, we'll take these bolts back out. And by the way, I, I just went ahead and bought four more bolts. I'm going to replace all the bolts. So, you know, they're 50 year old bolts. So it's time to go. All right. So I took the trailing arms, put them on the workbench. And really, I just uh, slipped a couple of bolts through here. And then I took a measurement between the outer edges of the bolts until I got to 14 and 3 eighths by spinning this thing. And, you know, it was really simple. So I got that to the proper length or a rough estimation uh, thereof. Anyway, so uh, let's see if uh, we can get this thing into place. All right, let's uh, put the top one in and get a uh, bolt through it. And we'll check the fitment on the other side. and we'll uh, pivot accordingly. So if you can get yourself a long 
punch, something like that. And if you got two things with a hole in it that need to line up, just stick it in there and wiggle it around a little bit so that you can uh, line things up. There we go. Now, I don't mean to brag or anything, but I'm gonna do it this time. How about that? Let's see. The other hole was spot on. Gotta twist that one down a little bit. Need an adjustment tool here. There we go. And we'll just put some uh, hardware on here loosely. See, I screwed that up already. Ha! I put my grease fitting on top. I didn't mean to do that. I wasn't watching. Since this is just a test, a mock-up as you will, uh, it doesn't really matter. I'm gonna have to take it back out anyway. So uh, let's go ahead and get the other arm uh, loosely installed, put this thing on the ground and see where our angles are when we get everything settled in place. All right, I've got two upper trailing arms installed now. All right, so everything is uh, loosely held in place and I'll show you what the uh, angleometer says. Compass, digital compass. I don't know if you can read that or not. It says 83.6, that's four degrees off of where it was. It was sitting at uh, about 90, I'm sorry, it was sitting at around 79.5, 79.7, somewhere in that neighborhood. Uh, that's, I, took, I took four degrees of pinion angle out of it, so it's, it was down here and I moved it up this way. All right, so let's take the uh, tension off of the uh, pinion. Let's see, which way was it? Yeah, there we go. It'll probably sag a little bit. Let the, um, pow! <laughs> I see, let's give that digital nonsense a little jiggle there. 83.3, so I was shooting for 85 and 83.5. So anyway, uh, close enough for government work. So anyway, uh, I've got the tension off of here. Let me get all the cameras and the lights and everything out from underneath this car. Let's get it on the ground, roll it around a little bit and uh, let's see what our new angles are, finally. All right, that's our first little foyer into this uh, little adventure. We are looking at 84.9, you may recall, eight degrees off the vertical. So let me take some additional measurements and see where we are. I need to do the drive shaft and the transmission. I'll gather up those numbers and we'll plug them into the uh, spreadsheet and see what we get. All right, we're back again. Uh, back to our uh, nice little spreadsheet here. Over here on the left-hand side, you'll see the original numbers, 6.5 for the transmission, uh, 1.8 at the drive shaft, and the pinion was 8. We got the car back on the ground. I sh rolled it back and forth, shook the suspension up and down, got her to settle in. And we're going to go ahead and give you the new numbers here. Uh, the number I got on the transmission was 6.6. .6. Uh, you know, whatever, we'll take it. Uh, 6.5, 6.6, you know, what's the difference? So anyway, but the, at the drive shaft, I measured it in several different locations on the drive shaft. Of course, you know, it's got some pitting, rust pitting here and there, and you got to be careful about, you know, so I took like 10 different measurements. And the number that came up more often than not, than not was 0.7. So we impacted the drive shaft angle quite a bit, actually. Uh, and the pinion angle that we got, uh, we were 8 degrees off of the horizontal but uh, now we are five and a half uh oh lost my mouse there it is but now we are five and a half no it was 84.9 it's 5.1 that's what it was and the last number was 5.1 at the pinion flange and i want you to take a look at that right there 0.1 is our difference between our working angles I'm, I'm, I can't believe it. <laughs> uh, so our homework, I think our homework paid off. However, we haven't driven the car. We've still got a lot of work to do. Uh, this is just preliminary. So the thing I've got to do right now is get this car back in the air, 
Uh, take the upper trailing arms back out, leave the dimensions in clearly, but I need to lubricate them. I need to put some uh, super lube on the uh, bushings and then fill up the uh, fittings and then reinstall them and then torque all, both the upper and lower uh, control arms to uh, 75 foot pounds. So okay, let me do all of that and I think the next thing you'll probably see is a test drive. All right, we're back again to make a few more tweaks here. So uh, I've got the car back in the air after the test drive and what I've got the uh, I've got the under hoist uh, thing here underneath the transmission I've got the two bolts out of the transmission uh, mount and we've got this thing lifted up around a half of an inch and that kind of jives up with the calculations I made on the spreadsheet earlier uh, this was at six and a half six point six something like that where it's sit we're sitting at six right now for the transmission and engine so this uh, point right here on the uh, the yoke going into the trans that will match up with the engine and transmission uh, line. So we're sitting at six there. And my idea was in reading the driveline uh, angles, uh, front and rear, should be less than three. Now, that, that's not going to be possible for this car. So I'm sorry. So the driveline uh, working angles should be less than three. I don't know if that's ever going to be possible for this car based on the geometry of the body and the frame and everything. The way this engine is situated in the car and the fact that the uh, the front of the engine is on these mounts here, if you took the engine and lowered it down this way, uh, you might be able to get this this the rake on this engine to, you know, flatten out a little bit, but you've got the uh, you know, you've got all this stuff in the way, right? So uh, not sure if that's ever going to happen, but what I'm going to try to do is try to uh, flatten out the rake on this engine and transmission as much as I can, and that entail and that involves raising the this, the uh, tail shaft of the transmission up this way. So right now, that's what I've got. I'm not sure what that is. Let's call it a half an inch. Um, so I'm going to tweak around. I'm going to play around with that a little more. and see what we have. So I'm going to find some longer bolts uh, and a spacer. I've got to come up with a spacer to slip between the trans and the mount. So I'll do that off camera. I come up with a couple of pieces of a quarter inch steel, a couple of holes, two new longer bolts. You get the picture. Uh, and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to come back here. Uh, and once I get these new angles established, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to come back here and I'm going to take uh, these upper trailing arms back out and uh, we're going to tweak this uh, pinion angle up some more and see if we can decrease the working angles on either end of the drive shaft. All right, round about on a test drive after two episodes of uh, driveline angle tuning and we're just going to do a little moderate acceleration up to highway speed into second gear there. Everybody just needs to get out of my way. I'm doing testing. All right, so the driveline vibration under acceleration has been fixed. In other words, I'm doing 70 right now. And the, for example, in going up a slight grade and giving it throttle uh, and putting that load on that rear pinion, then that vibration is now gone. So if I just give it a little gas here at 70, then that vibration is gone. So clearly, that is a win. Uh, so what? what's remaining? Well, now that I can hear what's going on because of because the car is not going row, 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 you know <laughs> I can hear every other little sound that the car makes uh, but I tell you what I think what we still have is I think it, nagging me in the back of my mind was a drive shaft that has a little bit of a something that's wrong with it 
I was closely examining the uh, joints on the drive shafts. It's double carding on each end, so you got four, right? And I noticed some cracks in the rubber on one of the joints in the rear. Both of those on the rear look original, and the ones in the front look new. So when I had the drive shaft uh, balanced uh, a, a few years ago, uh, clearly I didn't know anything about it, so I just trusted that they did the job correctly, and they stand they may have. However, I noticed some cracking rubber on one of the joints in the back, and I'm like, well, clearly that's they didn't replace that part, so I'm going to take the drive shaft back out of the car and have it balanced yet again, and I'm just going to have them put all new parts in it. That will remove any nagging concerns or questions in the back of my mind. And the reason why I'm going to do that is going down the highway, and I and it regardless of the throttle, regardless of where the throttle is, whether you're coasting or whether you're you're on it, I have a slight oscillation. And from everything I've read, that is a that's a drive shaft that's out of balance. So, uh, so I think probably we had a couple of issues here. We had, you know, pinion angle was way 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 out of whack. And the but, however, I think we had a little bit of a problem with the drive shaft also, and we're going to get that fixed. But there is another little side to this that says, you know what? What if that since that pinion angle was so out of whack that it basically ruined what the drive shaft company did a few years ago? In other words, they put new joints in it, but it just trashed them. You know, and if I take them apart, what are the, what are the little the needle bearings going to look like? I don't know. Bottom line is, I'm going to have the drive shaft uh, balanced in this car yet again. But I can get on this thing, I can nail it up to highway speed, I can hear the four barrel open and not have and not hear it go. It's just oh my lord! It was just such an awful driving experience. So all right, let's get this thing back to the house and finish up our little uh, video here. Will you people do something? Let's let's go already, okay? I'm getting road rage here. All right, welcome back. Let's go ahead and wrap this video up, folks. This has been a long journey, to be sure. So the end result here is that we have corrected the uh, pinion angle-induced driveline vibration. Yay! <laughs> uh, finally, uh, as you're going up the road and going down the highway and you know accelerating up a hill that, that it's gone it's gone I, I just i can't believe it but it's true uh it is gone so it, you may have seen in that last little video segment going up the road you may have heard a little whine uh i started to have a little freak out because i thought maybe my rear end was starting to whine after i'd spent all that time rebuilding it and then the more i drove it and i got back to the house and i popped the hood and i started looking around and the power steering pump is not long for this world i don't know what's going on with it it leaks there's a little leak there so probably it's air getting into the system causing cavitation that's a common problem for a power steering pump to whine i could rebuild it with a kit but i'm not going to i'm going to go ahead and put i'm going to throw money at it, at it because i don't want any guesswork i'm going to buy a layers uh, L-A-R-E-S. They're supposed to be the best thing coming, really, as far as rebuild and or new uh, power steering pumps for your classic car. So that's what I'm going to put on the car. And I wanted to thank you for that, uh, YouTube viewers, because, you know, this little YouTube channel gives me a little bit of money. Not a whole lot, but enough to buy occasional parts and tools and things like that. So we're going to give the old Cadillac, you and I, we are going to give the old Cadillac a brand new, well, a remanufactured Lairs power steering pump. Uh, so that thing was whining like crazy. So, and it made me, it seriously scared me. I thought my rear end was, was about to explode, but it's okay. It's okay. Also going down the highway at any speed, there's just a little jiggle maybe an oscillation not sure what it is not a noise or anything but it could be one of two things either i just need to have the drive shaft looked at again or it may be something as simple as out of balance tires so both of those things though are easy to remedy so i'll leave you with one last tip if you do decide 
to uh, install aftermarket uh, trailing arms on your classic car or just simply redo the bushings on the one you have. Whenever you rebuild or install trailing arms or control arms on a vehicle, uh, you need to torque them while the vehicle is down on its wheels under the pressure of its suspension system because you know the, the rubber is gripped by that torque and that rubber stretches that's how the the trailing arms or control arms function right so if you if it's stuck up like this and you torque it down like that and then you lower the car it can't move and the suspension will be sitting all out of whack right so uh, in order to do this car what you needed to do, or what I did because I don't have a drive up lift in other words you drive onto it so that you can have the suspension in you know at the resting spot so that I could torque the rear trailing arm so what I did was I lifted the car up slightly with the lift about two feet and I maneuvered some uh, just basic automotive uh, drive up on ramps underneath the rear wheels and then I set the car down and granted the car was on a tilt but the suspension system was resting on itself, so there you go. The suspension system was in a normal configuration. And of course, I had the arms and jack stands and jacks and all that kind of other stuff, you know, to keep the rear end, keep everything stable and, and safe. And I had the, uh, the car in park, obviously. And I had scotch blocks under the front wheel. So you can't be safe enough any time you're underneath a car. Anyway, so under those conditions, I crawled underneath there and I tightened all the uh, trailing arm bolts to 75 foot-pounds, which is the factory spec. This has been a long road and I think I'm going to end this video series on finding driveline vibrations right here today. So stay tuned for more videos both on the Mercedes and the Cadillac. I appreciate you guys stopping by the channel though, I really do. Thank you so much for stopping by and viewing all my crazy activities in our little shop. Go ahead and hit that like button for me. That would help my channel out tremendously. And also share the videos and comment below as you see fit. If you disagree with anything I say, put it down below. Let's talk about it. Let's have a debate on what's right and what's wrong. I've been wrong plenty of times. Well, anyway, if you'd like to be notified whenever I release a new video, don't forget to click the little bell down below. You guys know where it is. You guys have a good one. And remember to enjoy restoring, maintaining, and driving your classic Cadillac.